Hey, what's going on guys? There's an argument that I think we've all heard at one point in time where people will say, well, if a mobile suit is in space, why does it need legs? And it's a fair argument. And this mobile suit is a perfect example of one that gets by just fine without any legs. So this is the Draw C, originally from Gundam 0083, but we did see a unicorn version as well too, which did come out as a P Bandai kit. Also, not going to be reviewing that one, but today we're going to be taking a look at the original kit, which came out all the way back in 2011, so it's now turning a decade old this year. It's very cool, it's got the big balls on the shoulder, it's got just the big boosters for legs, and the upper body of basically a Zaku 2 F2, which is cool. So let's go ahead and check it out. So let's take a look at the box art here, you can see, like I was saying, it's just a very cool, unique design with another one there in the background. Also got the GPO2 flying over here. It's got a machine gun for an arm, and then it's got a beam saber mounted in the back of a shield over here, and it also has the option for making that just a regular hand for carrying a Zaku machine gun thing in here as well too. Going on to the side of the box, you can see this is number 133 in the line, and here on the top of the box there you can see how it's going to look once it's all painted up. Really cool design, definitely very unique, and it comes with a little stand here because obviously it can't stand up on its own. So you got some more information there about that, and then let's go around here onto the other side of the box. Yes, my box is uh, getting a little faded here from some sunlight, but you, you can see some action. It's got the hand, it's got the moving head, the very weird looking head, and so some of the other features of the articulation. Also some marking decals we're going to have in there for this as well too. And I thought, yeah, there it is. Uh, so yeah, it comes with, uh, not a Zaku machine gun, but this uh, kind of Gatling gun, but I think you can also just have it holding a Zaku machine gun as well too. I think there was the, maybe the other version came with a Zaku machine gun. But anyway, you got this cool Gatling gun that you can use uh, with that instead. So here's a look at uh, some of the fam there, all posted up. And the list price for this, 2,000 yen. So it is going to be a little bit more expensive. If you guys remember, the Zaku 2 F2 was 1,500 yen, so 500 yen more compared to that, which is kind of interesting. So four bags of runners there, and our instruction manual. Very nice a painted build here, photographed for the cover of the manual. And then on the back, kind of the same kind of stuff we saw on the front of the box, basically just more about the markings and some kind of action pose bits down here, and about the articulation, about the equipment that can also be used by the Zaku 2 F2, that's pretty cool. And then you've got your color guide down there at the bottom. Also, opening this up to the middle page, got some more information there about the mobile suits, some other mobile suits available in the HTC line from Gundam 0083. And then over here on this side, just again, some more information about that, information about its different weapons and different aspects of the kit there, the beam saber shield in the arm, the 40 millimeter rifle, or a Vulcan there in the arm, so just machine gun, basically. And then uh, we've got our parts list here, which looks like we're not gonna have anything left over except for like one of the beam saber effect parts and some of the polycaps, basically. And then all of the construction. So let's go ahead and check out the runners. So first up, our foil stickers here, and you can see we got these black parts we're probably going around on the head, and then your one little sticker for the mono eye, so you'll be able to kind of place that wherever you want along the track for the mono eye there on the head. And then these red bits, which are gonna go in those like verniers up on like the shoulder or big ball parts. And pretty nice set of marking decals here for this. So you got numbers in large and small font. You got some different markings on there, some Xeon logo markings, Neo Xeon logo markings on there. So that's quite, quite nice. Also got a couple of screws here. That's kind of unusual to see in an HG kit. Got the SB6 for our beam saber effect parts here in clear yellow. And a PC001 for our polycaps here in gray. Now the A-Runner here, like the mobile suit, is basically just in two colors. You've got this lighter gray color there, and then the main blue color of the mobile suit. The runner B1 is in that same lighter gray color with a kind of slight tint of purple to it. And then we've also got runner B2, which is a copy of this section of the runner up here. Runner C1 is our clear runner, which is originally from the Asimer. It says this is basically just going to be the parts we're going to use for the base. As you can see, unfortunately, mine has yellowed a little bit, even though it's just been in the box. That's kind of weird. And lastly, some more of our blue parts here on the D runner, and we've got two of these. So there you have it, guys. Not a ton of parts in there. To be honest, that 2000 yen price tag is seeming a little bit high for this at the moment, especially for like not having a moving mono eye in there. I mean, I know it's a kind of weird shaped head, but I mean, and not really having an articulation between the, the top and bottom half of the torso. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, let me get it all built up and then I'll let you guys know what I think. All right, guys, here is the tall boy, all done. And those legs, very long. Well, I guess legs in quotation marks, if you can call them that. Anyway, those boosters, four legs, very long. 
A uh, pretty cool build, very simple. Didn't really take a whole lot of time at all, obviously, without the uh, proper legs on it. The, that aspect of the build went very fast. And overall, well, it was a pretty simple build and it's not really gonna be able to do a whole lot necessarily. It does look very cool, it is very unique. So I, I think I'm definitely going to appreciate this one. Although I still probably anticipate most likely using this for kit bash material. I think it does still look pretty cool. So let's go ahead and check it out. So just to quickly go through the accessories because there are very few. First of all, we have the forearm parts for this side. If you didn't want to use the machine gun arm, you just can make it just as the regular forearm, which you will need to use this trigger finger hand, which you will need to hold this uh, Gatling gun. And speaking of hands, this open hand and this trigger finger hand are the only hand options that you have with this. So nothing else at all. Definitely would have been nice to at least have just like a couple of regular holding hands, even though they're not useful for anything with this. We do have the beam saber, which is just kind of molded in as like part of the shield. Well, it's not molded in, I guess I should say. You can take that off of the shield, but it's not really meant to be handheld. As you can see, it's just kind of designed in a way to just be part of the shield basically. So even though there wouldn't necessarily be any use for just regular holding hands with this kit or closed fists or any other type of hands, it would have been nice to at least have something else I think. But there's how the shield and beam saber looks. It's a pretty cool shield because you know it's very plain on the outside but you got a lot, a lot of nice detail there on the inside. And as you can see here you've got the option of plugging that either onto the back <clears throat> or the side of the arm depending on how you want to connect that so that looks pretty cool. And the Gatling gun as well too is quite nice. No sticker for that. Unfortunately, that maybe would have been nice to be included. I mean, not everybody likes using stickers, but just at least to have that for people who do want to use that. But overall, it is a really cool design. I guess a holding hand would have been useful for actually holding on to this secondary handle it's got up here. You could have actually maybe tried to do that, but now as it is, you just kind of won't really be able to do anything with that, unfortunately. But if you have like any of like the HG Origin kits or like the regular Zaku 2 F2, any of these other kits, they're basically all using the same style hands, so you could swap them and won't have the same color but I guess you could just swap the piece for the back of the hand as well too so uh, different hand option parts are definitely available they're around if you have other Xeon kits in HD form. But that's really about it for accessories so let me just go ahead and take this off the base which again like I said is cool that's included mine is kind of yellow tinted unfortunately but just want to talk a little bit about the articulation first off just about the stickers obviously putting the stickers up in here it kind of it's kind of uh, not great anyway I mean they look well enough from a distance when you look up close I mean it's kind of annoying I really wish that this would have been a separate red piece and I think if this kit were to come out now in like 2020 2021 uh, I think that probably would have been a separate red piece to go up inside of there but unfortunately it was just all those stickers there and then there's the rest of the stickers are basically just here for around the mono eye track there those black ones and then there's the mono eye sticker you can place on there wherever you want I just placed it right in the center there but you can choose about that as for the articulation though, the head does move up quite nice uh, just because of the design of this kind of like neck part there for it. So that's really cool how far up that can move. Very weird shaped head design. I still don't really like the design of it, but the articulation of it is pretty good. You can put it down all the way to there and then, you know, like rotate that of course side to side. The shoulders have the type of poly cap which will swing out to the front like that so you can get a good reach across the front which again would be great for holding onto that secondary handle on the Gatling gun. Uh, but then those can move a set to the side like that. The whole shoulder moves up like this ball part doesn't actually move on its own. It's basically just fixed to this shoulder part there. So that means you can only bring the arm up to about there so that's going to be about the extent of the upward movement of that unfortunately. Not very high because of those massive shoulder balls. Uh, you can rotate that at the top and then a single joint in the elbow giving you just about 90 degrees is going to be about the extent of the elbow joint there, not too much. The hand is just on a ball joint. Around here on the backpack, it's a cool design. I like how it's attached to the body. You have like those kind of like strut parts kind of between the waist and this just kind of support that looks pretty cool and the piping going into the backpack there. It does look cool. You got the big master thruster bells up underneath the backpack and underneath the hip section there and just some cool designs and the antenna and everything. So it's a cool looking backpack. And then these parts here on the side, I guess kind of stabilizers are just attached via ball joints. Those will mostly just rotate, but you can kind of change the angle of them slightly a little bit too, just because they're just there on a ball. And the same thing for the hip joints, these massive thruster units here are attached by a ball joint there at the top. So you can just kind of rotate those around as best you can. I guess like if you move them all the way to the front, they would basically just be like straight up and down vertical to the mobile suit. And as you can see, this whole hip section will also rotate side to side because actually the lower body and upper body are connected. So you can't actually rotate anything at the hip section here where you normally would be able to. Just a little bit of rotation there for these thruster units just there like within the hip section. So not a lot of accessories, not a lot of articulation, but you know, enough to give you some cool looks, I guess. 
I just want to give a little bit of a comparison here with the HG Zaku 2 F2 as the torso and like the arms are basically the same in their design, but they're not actually using the same parts. Uh, so you just can just see kind of how similar they look like that. And I just want to kind of check the compatibility as well too. If for, say for example, you wanted to swap the head, giving it just a regular Zaku 2 head, looks like you should be able to do that just fine. So you could give it a regular Zaku head like this. So that does look pretty cool. And then let's say maybe for example, if you wanted to swap the arm, that will also work. So you can see how you can mix and match some of these parts if you wanted to make a uh, Zaku 2 with these big massive shoulder balls on it or something, you could definitely do that as well. Could look kind of interesting if you want to use this for kit bashing. The legs, however, will not be compatible. As you can see, these are just uh, attached on there via a peg into a straight play cap there. Whereas I said before, these are attached via a ball joint, so those not exactly the same in their compatibility, but you do have some cool compatibility with some other kits. And just one last thing about that, I think it would be cool to give the machine gun arm to your Zaku 2 here, but the other thing uh, about the forearms, the actual design is you know basically the same, but you can see just how much smaller the draw C forearm is compared to the Zaku 2. Uh, F2. But I should also mention too about the base. It's not uh, quite as simple as I made it seem. There is actually a little bit of articulation at where the kit plugs onto the base there, which is better than other kind of similar bases like this that we've seen uh, included with a lot of HG kits. Normally, this one actually does have a little bit of rotation at the X and Y axis, so you can bend it a little bit forward, a little bit back, and a little bit side to side to give it a lot better uh, f uh, posing for making some dynamic poses of this. Now, like we saw, the articulation, you know, there's nothing really to write home about. There's not a lot really on the kit to move anyway. Uh, but just the ability to change the angle of the pose, the angle of the way the kit is plugged up on there is quite nice. And then we saw in the unboxing too uh, about that the kit does include a couple of screws. I should just mention that the screws just go there on the base. They don't go anywhere in the kit or anything. Uh, so if you're worried about that, that's just there to make sure that the base is nice and tight. So however you have the kit plugged onto there, uh, it's not going to get too loose or anything. Or if it does, you can just tighten up the screw on there a little bit. So overall, even though it's a pretty basic kit, I think it really is quite unique, very cool. I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit. I could definitely see myself getting another one of these at some point because like I said, I do kind of want to use it for kit bash parts, but then at the same time, it is a pretty cool design just on its own. So I would feel kind of bad, you know, about completely getting rid of everything on it. But with the list price of 2000 yen, I feel it is, uh, I don't know, I can't really explain that. I'm not really sure why it's kind of priced that high. That price does seem a little bit high, honestly, for what you get in the kit, really. Uh, but if you can get it at a fair price, then definitely go for it. I mean, even at 2000 yen, uh, around 20 bucks for that, it's not that bad for an HG kit. I just think that it probably could have been a couple hundred yen less, in all honesty. But again, it is a really super unique design. So if you're looking for that, and if you like the way that this looks, and if you can get it for a fair price, I would say definitely go for it. It's a pretty cool kit. But that is going to be it for me for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any other further questions or comments about this kit, of course, do feel free to leave those down below. So thank you so much uh, for any comments you guys want to leave. Also, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that. It's all greatly appreciated. So thank you guys so much. And thank you, as always, to USA Gundam Store for their support as well. You guys can check out all the HG kits and everything that we've got there on the site. The link to USA Gundam Store is down in the video description below, as well as my coupon code there, Zacorelius10. You guys can use that to save 10% off everything on the site also. So until next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye, everyone.